Come on. Yeah, it should be fine. Uh, okay. something. I don't think so. No, we're good. Oh, poggers? Yeah, so as you can see, Nephilim or uh, the fucking somebody else on their team I forget, and it is, is also casting this. Uh, Cuz casting his POV as well, so that'll be interesting to watch. I need to execute my observer script. Um, yeah, first play in match. I can't, is this a BO owner? Is there a BO? Three. Best of three. Okay, so we're we're in for it. Okay, at least this is starting at seven thirty and not like ten o'clock. Beal plays oh. at like ten o'clock or fucking. Oh, right. central timers. <laughs> Just kidding, man. You're cool. Central. Ish. Timers. Is that central not what it is? Right. So much cooler. Yeah. You're like Minnesota, right? No, I'm Chicago right now. That's almost the same thing. No, it's not. You're uh, well, like, Midwest completely different. major city. Uh, well, there's a difference between like major cities in the Midwest and like rural Midwest. Rural Midwest is a like shit show. Yeah. Okay, but like Minneapolis, Chicago, Detroit, all the same, same. <laughs> there's a, a very heavy difference, and I also Detroit's not in the what? Detroit. What? Time zone. I think I'm like right. Detroit's right. Eastern. Yeah, it is Eastern, you fuck. Technically, it's Midwest, yeah, that's, but it's Eastern. That's where I live, it's Detroit. Ew. North Detroit now. Uh, that makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean that makes a lot of sense? Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's, it doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying it makes a lot of sense. The debut of Puck. The debut of Puck, we're using this. That's their new offlane player. It's like their ninth official player on their team. Wait, people glad or Mike's? Because Mike's looks people like the glad. same roster. Okay. Mike's is the same thing. Yeah. So when. Fuck, who was our carry player on People Glad's original sign up? Damn, I don't remember. What the fuck? Why do you, why do you post this shit in Discord? Like, I was asking a willing question. It's not. Like, why? I was curious on what people's answers would be. Gotcha. Okay. You know, I didn't. I didn't ask it just for for my sake. I mean, kinda I did, but you know. Alright, so they signed up with... Who? They signed with Batira, Smiley... Sucks like... Is that right? Yes. I really do. Oh, the debut of Offlane Puck. I thought his yeah, name yeah, was yeah. literally the debut of Offlane Puck. But oh, you no, the name, is, mean the the name is Puck. Puck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so they started with with J Mac, Babis, Batira, Snail, or uh, Smiley, then. Okay, before you finish, this is why we need a Roster Moves channel in. Uh... In Dude. League of Lads, because like some of this shit's impossible to follow. It's like jumping into yeah. some TV show like three weeks after it started, and then all the characters are just completely different. Like, I guess it's probably harder for casters than it is for players. It should be easier. Like, I I'm awful at paying attention to who's on what. 
uh, lineup, I should be way better. But, like, even still, it, it's, like, fucking, we, we need a website. We need, like, an ESPN for League of Lads to keep up with all this shit. Like, 24-7 coverage of League of Lads. Come on, it's not that hard. All right, all right, all right. It's not 14 that bad. 7 coverage of League of Lands. Oh, there's not even that many roster moves. Decent amount. There's also, you bad... got to cover the drama, too. We're not just talking roster moves. We're oh, talking, dude, the like, drama? Drama, dude. Well, I mean, a lot of the drama is a lot smaller than, you know, what people putting it out to be. It definitely is. Uh, other than Guam being, uh, you know, basically, basically the worst admin ever. Are you but, live? Uh, just kidding, but yes. Oh, nice. Okay. Yes, I'm just calling Guam the worst admin ever. Honestly. Yeah, Guam is kind of a fucking idiot. Yeah. Same with MX Squire too. Fuck MX oh, dude, Squire. fuck MX Squire! Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> they conspired to take over. Birdman's the only clean admin. Fuck yeah. Have you been live streaming right now? Oh, I can't yeah. watch Clanker's stream, damn it. You don't want to watch World of Warcraft? No, he's streaming Dota right now. Poggers? Why would I watch World of Warcraft, dude? It's all he plays. Clanker's? No, he's been playing a ton of Dota recently. Although he's not playing offline. Recently. Anymore. Yeah, that's one of the reasons. Literally, do you not watch the DOS content show? Uh, not really till playoffs. Get out of here. Get out of here, Zero Escape. Kind of you, boring, you're not bro. supporting the community. Dude, they don't watch games. <laughs> he just looks at Dota buffs at the end of the week for stuff. Yeah, but he has interesting insight, dude. Zero Escape does not support the community. We should kick him from the league. Come on. Come on. No, you support it by co-casting every, every, like, once every three months. Uh, I coast, like, playoffs and stuff. Hey, this is kind of year. boring, man. It's been a while. You volunteered to co-cast this one, though, so I don't even have to feel bad. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Even after I applauded you saying you were one of the better players in this game or in this league and yeah, you're just lying through your teeth i get it yeah okay <laughs> you know what Zero Escape? Uh, what do i know bro not a whole lot is the answer you know what me too bro i just want to be out of here wow that's a very positive <laughs> outlook from the the capital <laughs> uh... uh maybe more captains should take note from you just be incredibly negative it's about humbling your teammates, you know what I mean? Sure, I can see it. Because <laughs> that's what everybody's worried about. Did we not do a coin toss, by the way? I didn't see a I coin think, toss. I uh, think... Ko was saying that... Uh, people Glad just had higher priority, but I don't uh, know where you okay. think that I from. I kind of figured that might be the way it works for this, but... Well, hold on, who's higher seat? Well, since it is oh, the plane tied. too, I guess it makes sense for just the higher seed to have priority. Yeah, they're tied. Um, and I well, think they the won tiebreaker? one. Because there's uh, also tiebreakers. Even if they won one, there's another category that's like head-to-head uh, -head matchups of other opponents. Well, people glad. Oh, has Ko not head-to-head -head won any either? I mean, if they had the priority, I'm assuming they picked first pick Five but it might have been radiant who knows I, i've seen a lot of teams prioritizing first pick just to get out um clockworks your pit lords have been pretty big first pick spends within the first two picks are also incredibly popular at the moment yeah um, i think china kind of showed recently about how uh like first pick works where your mid lane isn't really that important because of how close the small camp is even if you get like you're playing Zeus and you get Viper or something, dude. Yeah, like your game isn't that bad. Casting pubs earlier, you'll see like a Zeus into a Viper, and it just like even though Zeus gets fucking dominated, like it does not matter at all. Just because you go from the jungle, you win like two fights and you're back into the game. Like, mm -hmm. I guess it really depends on your core and 
what people have been saying we're really in this like kind of secret four protect one i don't mean secret is in the team i just mean like low key we're in a four protect one uh meta at the moment and it's really just about whose carry is gonna win in uh, uh, i don't think there's anything minutes. like secretive about the four protect one i i think like, it's uh... less so than the four protect one that was prominent like six years ago seven years ago um, because oh, yeah. me times. personally playing around that time, uh, it was definitely more you sacrifice everything. Your off lane is literally a suicide lane. You don't do anything there except for like die to try and get XP. Because everybody tri laned. Like it's My not theory... like every lane is a tri lane or every safe lane is a tri lane. Like it used to be in four protect one. Yeah. But yeah, this thing is it's like uh, what China showed with the double protection heroes like uh snapfire plus oracle or mag plus oracle or mag omni knight mm -hmm. like it kind of showed how important first pick was and you locking your carry with either the 10th pick like in the first phase and that's like your high priority voids arc ward and stuff like that whatever you're picking a lot of or getting in the 18 slot and both those are really good spots to have your carry um but obviously the 18 slot is a lot better than the 10 one that you get from second pick mm -hmm. i don't well, know if that's still is Omni Knight a big pick in China? Because I literally do not see Omni Knight at all, even in. Yeah, Bums. that's what like, that's what Vici was on. That's what they won Game Five with, was sure. Omni. and they got through. Um. They played Astra, I think, before, and that was kind of their most important hero, and then they ignored it again till Game Five. Hmm. So. Well, and I guess the good thing about this patch, too, is that you can get those kind of save heroes out of your off lane as well. Like, if you're picking a Magnus, or if you're picking um, even, like, a Pit Lord, you can... It's so versatile at the moment. But both of these teams look like they're picking up supports right now. Unless uh, People Glad wants to run a Tusk off lane, Mike and the Muppets not hiding anything at all. These are your two supports, no matter what, unless they want to run, like, a Rubik mid. Yeah, this is kind of a weird opening from Mike and the Muppets, because um, now they get to counterpick both their supports, so they kind of get to win both lanes like a lot better than they would be able to. Because now you have to pick a five that's like okay against Lich, and there's not a lot of them, but stuff like Underlord, uh, Bloodseeker, your typical beaters in lane are really good against Lich. Like you can just farm against Lich, and it's no big deal. But like if they showed Clockwork or whatever here, or not Clockwork, but like an offlane hero here, Sand King, whatever people pick offlane, Mars, they would be able to um, just lose their one offlane, like get kind of picked there, and match up better in their safe lane. But the fact that they're showing this, they're kind of losing both their offlane and safe lane. People glad has a lot of time to come up with counters for this too, but they go with the Enchantress. Uh, I mean, there's not too much to steal. I guess the Tusk is actually pretty good to play Rubik into, but... Huh. Yeah, that's a long time to try to figure out an inch pick, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, um, 52 seconds they're down to in reserve time. They're also going to pick up a... Or at least ban out the life sealer too, which I think is a good idea. You might as well just get rid of it if you're playing into a Tusk. And TB out as well. Kind of Actually, all the popular like, cores are just being banned right now. I think that's kind of the struggle with both of these teams picking up their... We have four supports out right out the gate like yeah we're just gonna get core bands for the next six and i don't know what's gonna be left over like all we have right now spend gone life stealer gone specter gone jug gone void gone tb gone like medusa's left i guess am gone i mean there's like am there's drow well am's gone we still have the drow uh, I usually think if you're gonna run Drow, you kind of have to pick up Avenge or something for it. With Drow, uh, the most popular thing is Undying. Undying Drow. Yeah, Undying even, was uh... even still it's that second support though, right? Like you probably don't yeah. want to pick up an Undying for either of these teams. Well, now now Mike and the Wapis is kind of limited to a melee laner, like some Slark type hero. Uh, I think mm -hmm. them ban like I don't like either the three bands because those are our heroes that you wanted that they couldn't really pick. Yeah, so it's probably uh, it's literally just like Slark. Maybe Luna is still in the meta. Like, mm. well, like how are you supposed to lane with Lich? 
uh, you know, like any of these ranged heroes. I think I think maybe people glad can go for it, but oh, you're saying um. Hmm. Yeah, so building Muppets. So people glad here is gonna look at their offlaner. Uh, I'm not super familiar with Patera's hero pool. You think they they pick their offlaner before seeing an enemy core though? Or... It's kind of the weird spot of being pick 15 and having both supports. So this is this is kind of a terrible pick because Axe is a kill lane hero and you're playing against Lich. Well, they picked their offlane too. Better offlane hero. But I guess they're not pressured into picking their core right now. But I think both these teams are gonna pick up their core. And maybe we've just done the five four three two one draft for both of these teams, but it's probably a test for. This is a also a very weird snap pick. Lich and Urbic are both very good against Weaver. Mars is yeah. Mars absolutely owns Weaver too. Um, this is a really weird draft. I'm not really sure. Like either of these teams, it feels like nobody's winning it. It just kind of feels like they're both losing it somehow. Well, Muppets draft right now is drastically better. This uh, second phase is disastrous for people glad. They've picked two um, bad heroes. Like bad. I, I don't think they're either not, bad not heroes. Not like on out of meta, own. but as far as draft goes, Lich owns Axe and Lane. That's like it doesn't really matter what the safe lane hero is anymore, because Lich is gonna be both Axe and Tusk. And Mars is or er, Weaver is never safe on map against Mars. And he can't kill either supports very easily because Lich is just going to pull him and Rubik can lift him, which are both instant stuns. Mm -hmm. So it's looking really hard to build a game on Weaver. Uh, like even if they're... you buy Lincolns, like it's really easy to pop that with either. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. So their only like power time is the transition phase, like the eight minute mark when Weaver will be on <sighs> Diffusal probably. And they play with Enchantress and Max Tag Team. Wait, 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 eight minutes or eighteen? Eight, like eight to fifteen minutes. That's when they have to kind of take over the game. Weaver's gonna get a fusel before fifteen minutes. Well, he's gonna have parts for it, right? And sure. he's gonna have it at the end of the fifteen. Quick. If they're getting owned in lane by a Mars, though, I think this is a, like you said, it's a really hard Weaver lane. Well, the, the, the lane is the lane is fine for Weaver, the Mars Rubik, but the game is incredibly bad for him, mm -hmm. which makes this pick incredibly weird. What the fuck is that? You go Abyssal on this hero, I guess. It's more lockdown for a Weaver. And I've seen the Axe Ursa is not great. You think it's fine well, for Ursa, Ursa, but it's not Axe great. Axe Ursa is favored to Axe. But again, the Lich is just going to kind of beat him. Sure. But Tusk and Chantress Weaver are all very good against Ursa. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like there was better Koei's picks Dude, here. Maybe, than maybe it's next level. They're going to throw Axe mid instead of offlane, and they'll last pick an offlaner. Or it'll be like an offlane weaver. Who knows? <laughs> I sure weaver. hope not, man. I sure hope not. I, I think it, at this point, like, screw it. Picking Ursa okay. and Axe is basically just like playing the lottery. Like, if you can get no spins, then great. But most of the time, you're just going to take more damage than you're dealing. This is a out. really weird draft, and the fact that they ban out Brood too. Uh, it's just Smiley's best hero, Snail. Uh, he is the uh, level twenty-five Brood player. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, yeah, that's not a hero you're gonna ban. It's just one of his best first. things, and in, in any like okay game, that's what he's gonna be picking. Sure. And it's especially scary with them having twenty-four pick. So they did directly I mean, get two of have, the zero. They have brood counters though. Like you have a Mars to deal with it. You Mars also have okay. like Rubik glitch as well. Like Mars can clear off the spider super easy and that lock. It just limits what you can pick middle. Because you don't really want to put your Mars mid. True, and they they do have the last pick as well. Um, but one of Mike's so. better heroes is Conco, which is something that uh, Smiley doesn't play brood into. I really do think you and put MX Conco makes this here. You probably put MX Wire in a play making hero. I I don't like whenever he plays. Uh, Kuka's fine. Whenever he plays like these boring mid heroes like DK or you know. It's, it's just thing. what he has to do for this team. Yeah, they're playing with a with a core player. You know, fit on this going to offlane, and it hasn't really been smooth to this point, which is why they're playing in this round. Magnum the last. Band. MX Wire should be the one making plays for this team though i i think that's what he's best at and him doing it from the mid lane is always what he's been really good at like so i think we're gonna see 
Kanka middle here, and then people glad. Just into the Weaver. It, it feels like the easy pick. Yeah, we're gonna see either uh, Kanka or Wex and Volker. Uh, I'm a bigger fan of Kanka. They're out of time, but. Now they go Ember. Okay, so Ember isn't really fantastic in Enchantress or Weaver. Um, Weaver has no issue like time lapsing your chains. Because that's kind of like your biggest catch on it. Like on Weaver, besides Mars alting him. They have a lot of but, uh, for an Ember, too. The biggest thing is that he can't go Max Flame Guard and. The the Enchantress can always purge shield, which makes Ember drastically worse. And I think we're gonna see OD here. They Legion came okay. very close to randoming that, but they do pick the Legion. Is this a min Legion? Yes. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a. I showed this a while ago, <laughs> three seasons ago against Eternal Kings, when teams were confident in stealing the Rest White Ember. With the Legion thing, I saw that in C first. It was the TNC player at the time. Whatever his name is. Uh, the Legion know. starts with like seven more damage, has drastically higher armor, and a better, like the Moment of Courage. That's the, the third spell. It makes it really hard for Ember to walk through the creep wave. I just got done casting Koiz in a pub game. Okay. Or Kawhi's. God damn it. Dude, Pog. I'm literally always going to pronounce that the wrong way. I swear to God. It's back and forth. Okay. Either way, I, I mean, I like the Legion pick. It definitely gives them a lot more lockdown. It's not great into the Ursa, but, like, they don't really have too much. They had the Axe call for the Ember Spirit. That's pretty much it. They just want to lock that down, I think. So, if people glide misplays their transition phase like coming out of lanes like their first two movements are blocked or jammed or however the case, like whatever the case is that's uh what's going to kind of like deem the game because if ruby or if uh legion can't get early dual damage their team really falls short mondo won't have a great game on weaver you'll see mm -hmm. him die on the side lanes quite a bit so here you think they basically just have to be really aggressive in, like, yeah yeah, yeah. there can the there can be no like... there can be no like splitting the map Everything has to be going forward for here, because you have to give time for you have to give time for Axe to get his blink up, and it'll just come down to how well J Mac plays on Enchantress here. I usually like these double uh, fast heroes with Enchantress to play in front of your creeps, but it comes to how comfortable J Mac is on Enchantress. <laughs> He's a much more what the fuck. What? Are they doing oh, the, they're, are they're they doing the no Tidehunter strat? Is this, is this what's happening? Uh, I think he lagged. <laughs> what? I mean, they, they see that happen because of a ward, but... I'm... Okay. Well, okay. Like, I'm pretty sure that ward spots that, so they see... No, they, it doesn't quite see it. So I'm not sure why they're actually tipping JM4C there. J Mac, J -Mac he's having a hard time, man. But no, uh, I like no. I like what they're doing here. We're trying to get the fir the, the first blood kill. Um, Ember is blocking his lane, which is a little unfortunate because they're going to try to snipe the hill. But even battling here is a good spot. There are four heroes top, four people glad. Let's see if they try and contest it for the rune. We will just back off on Ka and Fatalness. No, Ka's still going to go for it. Might actually get chased out. He's able to dodge some of the damage here, the slow coming out from J-Mac, and I don't think he's going to die, but he's going to take a decent amount of damage. Fortunately, that's a play where Baboon maybe could hey, have Babis, followed up to get Yeah, him, went but... for Rune instead of the hero kill here. He's instantly TPing down. Axe and again, this bottom lane comes to two if... Uh, I guess Puck is his name, the new player. If he recognizes to cut the lane or if he tries to outbattle him. How new is Puck? Is this like brand new? I've never heard Have of it before. they scrimmed at all? Like... I believe they scrimmed, but... I've never heard of him as far yeah. as League of Lads. I don't, stuff goes. I don't have an in for like what teams are scrimming, so that's kind of just blind to me what's happening in that aspect, but 
Maybe I should make my own fake team just so I can get in the captain's chat for that. Um, so this team has been screaming the law as far as people glad goes. Uh, and to my knowledge, cuz team hasn't scrimmed very often. Yeah, it has MX Squire on it, so. Yeah, and that guy's a giant fucking noob, so yeah. what can you do? It's pretty bad. <laughs> Probably the worst mid laner in the league. I don't even know how we made it on this team. He started winless on Axe. I can dig it. I don't know, I can dig that. You, you're lacking a lot of move speed into a Lich anyway. He probably just wants to try and play around the Ursa hitting him and trying to get creeps on top of him. Although... Sure. Does go... I, I'm curious to see what his build's gonna be. I think you just go... Max counter helix no matter what on Axe, but if he puts a level into Call or not, they might be able to get early kills onto Ursa if Turtle King isn't going to stick around as much. Well, the early kill spell would be uh, levels in Battle Hunger. You can't, if uh, you don't really want Ursa clicking, you want Ursa running from you, which is kind of why the Axe lane is playable for Ursa Axe, because mm -hmm. until level 3 Fury Swipes, they're not that great of a spell. Top lane 2, it looks like it's not going horribly for Mondo. Off the ATS at the moment, basically tied. He's gonna get thrown underneath the tower as well as the spear does not Red. have any way to get out of this. And as soon as I talk, Mondo drops. They do get a return kill onto J Mac, or J Mac picking up the kill on the return kill with this later, yeah. But uh, obviously, you're losing a lot of XP there. You don't really mind if you're the Rubik. It seems like inexperienced of Ka to allow the large camp to spawn. I don't know if he just tried to like block it or what happened, but they, he's like played against Enchantress players for many seasons. Like more than just me, there were others. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he's had this happen to him many times to where he just loses to the jungle camp. And he actually just lost it again too. Yeah. yeah I mean, probably the first one's the biggest one because they do end up losing that life there. But. Yeah, kind of getting another like hero's right click in early levels for the 30 seconds is really important. And you have like a seven second overlap with your enchantress, or with your enchant, where you can you can slow and have your creep at level one. And so that matters a lot when heroes are still uh, sub five armor. Mid lane, it looks like Smiley's doing okay into MX Squire. Uh, 17 CS compared to 14 for MX Squire, so still decently even. But uh, in terms of harassment, it looks like MX Squire. It's still yeah, I'd say, I'd say this is actually going pretty low or uh, pretty bad for Smiley, even though he's up two selves and regen. Oh, uh, I oh just God. miss everything. We lose the Lich and the Mars and top lane. They might even lose Mondo. Is getting very low. Ka couple more right clicks might be able to bring him down, but popping the salve is Mondo trying to get it. Is not going to happen. Double kill for J Mac. In the meantime, bottom lane they lost the Lich. We're early four yeah. to one lead in terms of kills for people glide up by one k gold at the moment. Axe is buying. It appears to be phase boots. He'll have chain milk on the way. Cool stuff. Again, his uh, play into what the fuck? So J Max using a level in Q. It's real powerful. Your W only doubles in duration so, or something? You said, you said, what the fuck, like that was a bad thing? Like, oh, a it's little absolutely terrible. Really? Isn't that yeah. like the ultimate harass spells? We do lose the Tusk bottom. And oh. okay, as soon as I go bottom, j Max going to die as well. <laughs> My camera movement is incredible, impeccable. So with Enchantress, you can use like 8 Qs, 9 Qs in lane. Or you can press heal about 5 times. And so if you if you go like zero four four, you're super you're extremely tanky. In bottom lane, you see Babis losing both runes to Cradle King. Yeah, that is pretty nice. Puck doesn't really have too many creeps there. The spin with so. Kawhi but you'll see here he's not gonna be. Like he'll be like able to harass, but he won't be able to, properly kill, his lane. Because he doesn't have the long override time, so he can't get like a he can't get like the centaur creep, from a the uh, radiance triangle, and walk that centaur creep down into the lane, and being able to enchant the hero. You pop the fort, bottom blade puck. I get slowed up twice, but Kawhi is actually not committing for it. 
The middle lane, Bab is coming uh, to gank Ember as soon as he's level 6. Rotation behind and that is Shows on the creep wave before it's Miley duels. Pog champ. Yeah, that's going to make it a nice heads up play there. Invis rune top as well. Bottom lane, they're trying to go on Pucky yet again. They're getting the double slow from the Lich and the Ursa. A couple of hits coming out. A bird also hitting on the Quiz, unfortunately. But Baboon doing a nice job there with the Ice Shards. Turning it around, trying to bring down Turtle King. But now he's taking a lot of damage from Kawhi's. Who I think is just going to get the kill here. Trying to get down the clip, but not going to occur. Uh, still had 10 seconds on the Ice Shards, so you can do the uh, next level play to get down. So. And the Invis rune did end up getting a dual... Or, um... Uh, kill, but he didn't get the duel. Mm. Which we're uh, sort Mac of approaching. We're still only seven minutes in the game. I don't think it's anything to worry about quite yet that you're not getting these kills, but they got to start adding up soon. Uh, I think it's incredibly important. Smiley's game matters a whole bunch as far as coming forward goes. Or like the game going forward, and he's not really crushing middle as he's supposed to. Sure. In Legion versus I'm Ember? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, uh, as a PMA player, unlike you, Zeriscape, I mean, <laughs> just take these things in stride. But we are seeing X about a full level higher than Koiz bottom, or he was before he had to go home. Uh, Koiz was able to recover in the time when Puck had to run. But now, Babis going top lane. J Mac uh -huh. with the neck creep. Uh, it might be we looking should, for uh, a lift here. The first target might be Baboon. Because they do have a ward on the cliff, but I think they're just going to play this patient. Don't really look for a kill yet. Surprised we haven't got more rotation bottom. Bottom lane Puck might actually just drop here. The pull coming out from the Lich does have a dunk, but not really going to save you here. It's Kawhi's getting a kill on the Puck finally. Kawhi being caught. Um, does get the TP out in the middle of three heroes. Fatal is throwing a spear just to get rid of some of that damage. Not too much, but it does end up saving him. And a DD picked up by Smiley. They might look for a duel with this. Baboon's actually rotated mid. They just need the snowball here in order to get the duel off. I think they can make this one happen, especially with the DD. He doesn't have a snowball level, but still should be possible as fatalness is very far up at the moment needs to like use a mars wall or something tries to push smiley away defensively but with four heroes on top of him this duel is for sure gonna happen and the damage is there first win for smiley he had the ability to uh, uh like all then TP in the out. bottom lane is gonna get slowed down yet again goes for the call to save his own life the pull is there from turtle king might try and get a turn the spins not coming through turtle king ends up getting the last hit this time yeah so it's now where you want to start getting the game away from your weaver and start putting it against the ursa uh, i'm not a huge fan of where smiley and babis have made their last two plays both in top lane uh j max should have been should have uh, by now left the lane here mm -hmm. Uh, it does seem like he's spending a lot of time top, but it might net him a kill right now, trying to get turned on to Ka. Marzal being popped by Fatalness, hits the spear this time. Should die to Mondo, but he's actually staying inside the Marzal, so he can't chase quite yet. The right click's now coming through. Baboon connects on the Ice Shards, will get the kill. Fatalness still sticking around. Again, that Tusk Weaver power really being shown right now as Fatalness is getting clipped down. Mondo getting the last hit with the Sakuchi. And his two kills in the top lane for people, Glad. Yeah, those are great kills. I'd like to see them now moved south, or to the southern side of the map, and start playing uh, against the Ursa. Feels like Quiz is basically gone untouched at the moment. Yeah, and you're seeing now the Axe is kind of lost in the map. And this yeah. is kind of a huge issue to where the game won't recover very well for him. Looking for that bounty rune. Might have to pop an alt here to turn it onto Smiley. He's going to get the call away to secure that bounty rune, but now Puck might just die instead. Looking for a duel. Turtle King could be the target. Is going to get it off, but does he get the damage? It's going to be close. Not even as Puck follows it up with the dunk to guarantee the damage. Up to 20 now on Smiley. Kawhi's will run away from this engagement. Another big rotation from People Glad. They're making these happen so quickly. And J Mac might have just gone a bit too far as Kawhi's is going to slow him down. The shards not connecting. Unfortunately, you just lose the enchantress. Yeah, that's Pushed part of the. Forward. That one was a little weird. Top lane. Yeah, and this is the part where now we're going to see Rubik really enjoy life having the Sakuchi. It's not very high leveled yet. 
But that's uh, it's more effective than like AM oh, blink. blink we do have a snowball. Cuz rotated down, so they have multiple stuns to make this kill happen. Babu, no way of escape. Must locked himself in his own shards there. So this is like part two of why Rubik is real good against uh, Weaver. The Sakuchi, you can think of it as like an AM blink that does. Um, damage. Yeah, around 250 damage as uh, when the game gets later. So like now you can see Mondo die here. Uh, we'll see if they get the, oh, the spear from Fatalist doesn't connect, but they do get a kill bottom onto the offlaner. They might still look for this as Turtle King going very far enough, even using the alt does get them inside. What a placement for the Marcel. Everybody getting locked inside this. It perfectly ended at the snowball, and now Baboon's going to drop Fatalist with hell of a play. Rotation over from Smiley, trying to find Ka. Still has him underneath the sentry. Sakuchi is not going to save you. Will get the win just barely from Smiley, but maybe j be the next target for MX Squire, who TP'd up, throwing a spirit in, maybe looking for the change, doesn't quite have it off cooldown yet, throwing the spirits forward, not enough damage, j -Max still just trying to survive, but this spear ends his life as fatalness, really making the plays in the top lane, unfortunately you lose another duel there, up to 30 damage now, still hitting those timings for people, glad, but losing a lot of gold in the meantime. So there we kind of saw what Weaver's, like the rest of Weaver's game is. He spent a lot of gold, and he's not buying a damage item either. He is buying Lincolns, but he's spending a lot of gold and a lot of time. How does that happen, dude? Stolen duel. We can get some Rubik damage now. <laughs> but um, you're seeing there where Weaver just gets ulted by Mars, and even though he was like half health when he left Sakuchi, he couldn't move anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It they have a lot to deal with Weaver. They have a lot to deal with basically any other hero. As you said, Marzal is even a decent combo for the Snowball if you use it early. Obviously, you you can get out of the Marzal with Snowball pretty easily, but you kind of have to be patient with how you're using it. So people glide right here is in a really good position to go defend their tower. This uh, oh, pinching in. All TPing in. They will try and get on top of the Ursa early. Puck looking for a call, but can't find a target quite yet. In fact, they don't have any. Smiley's trying to get a duel off at the beginning of this fight, but it's not going to happen. A nice chain's on the low ground, and now they might try and turn it. The Lich Alt flying out, but it's a bit too late. Just bouncing in between creeps. Can it bounce back to Smiley? Yes, it does. Trying to get the turn. Blade Mail popped into the duel, but the Marzalt coming through onto four. The win not happening, unfortunately. I don't think it actually just barely missed, and they lose their core. MX Squire dropping. They thought they could take this fight. They were a bit late on People Glad the jump. But now, in the mid lane, Mondo might try and go a little too far deep here. They don't quite have dust, but they do pop a sentry. Is Custa looking for him? But Mondo is out of town. And people glad take a very much needed fight. So I think Save they made the a mistake power. as far as the rotation goes. They could have caught a lot more if Legion didn't TP. I think even uh, maybe with the first second TP, is there like a second and a half to two seconds earlier compared to just running? But because he TPs in front there, it gives them time to readjust their spot compared to them being able to trap the river. He does so it's have part his of... rune on Smiley right now. They might try and look for... Because immediately you see Mike and the Muppets are just back to that tier 1 push in the mid lane. But instead, they might rotate over, try and find Smiley, who does walk underneath the sentry, finds another one as well. But Ka still looking for the lift, gets the dust on top of Smiley. Can he get this off though? He has another Sakuchi, but how far do they want to dive? They'll eventually just back off. Their uh, Axe player, Puck, is finishing Blink uh, with these Bonnie runes here. not bad timing. This is where we're going to see uh, if things are going to go right for people glad or if things are going to start going downhill. Except this is how these next, yeah, these next about three minutes go. People glad needs to win two fights and take a tower. And if that stuff doesn't happen, the game's going to coast very smoothly for Oh, they do find Fanonis in the jungle looking for the duel, but the spear away is there in time. Fanonis getting locked down, has to use his Marzal defensively. Baboon inside the Marzal alone. They might try and get the kill on the Baboon. Yes, they do. Completely isolated. And now Ka actually stealing Sakuchi, still trying to chase down Mondo. They have vision on top of him. Does he have a dust? Yes, he does. Able to get the lift off. No, and the lift is still on cooldown, but they get the chains from MX Choir locking him down as Turtle King. Too dead in the mid lane. They go a little bit too far underneath the tower. They can't get that dual initiation. 
and the fight just falls apart from there. They go for the initial fight. I believe they didn't even have the axe there to start that. Yeah, axe is just now getting his blink. If they would have waited about you know the thirty seconds for that to happen, their game looks a lot better than what happens. Mm. But they just gave up about two k gold. Yeah, it it seems like a weird timing, right? Because they now just lose the tier one tower. I think if they just wait like. 30 seconds till they start trying to push. Maybe you can get a decent axe call. But it goes completely the opposite direction. And it's a 3k gold lead early for Mike and the Muppets. I didn't tip over. But uh, this is what we're going to see. The Weaver is going to kind of hate his life for the rest of the game. Because now he's just going to be hunted. Because even with, uh, you know, Lincoln's, he'll still die to Rubik, Fade Bolt, into Lift. Which was uh, why I was an advocate for a damage on like defusal. Just something to like, kind of keep the supports from moving and draining uh, the Mars as a mana. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see now everything's going to be going forward for people glad. Uh, Legion is close to his blink too. And Puck is uh, debuting his blink unless he walked over a ward. It still is unknown. We're seeing another fight from middle. People yeah, are... They, they, it looks like they oh. tried to initiate with this with the smoke, but Mike and the Muppets also throwing a smoke at this. They get the change on the smiley. Big axe call. The back into MX Squire looking for the call, but it actually gets cancelled out by the Lich Armor, so we can't get inside the Marsal. They're all three dying inside of this Marsal. You can't get inside of the Weaver. That's a duel win for Cut as he stole out the duel. MX Squire trying to survive to the bug. They get the lift on the smiley. Still a couple more hits to bring him down, but the spear is there. Finally gets the call off from Puck, but I think it's a little bit too Late. He's gonna lose his life instead. Four dead for people glad. Yeah, Puck had a huge hesitation there. Uh he waited to see I think too many heroes. He should have kinda had the game instinct there to guess where the heroes behind him were. To even even just calling the Ember there to do damage. But instead he waited, 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 and then eventually got his blink cancelled and was just trapped outside of the Mars ulti. And so they were able to just kind of assassinate inside the thing, or inside the circle. And because of the fight location there, they're now giving up Roshan to Ursa. Yeah. Very quick timing to take this Rosh. Obviously without the axe, you can't even go for a fight around this. Easy one for an Ursa there. Dude, and I told you, Kaz going to get some dual damage this game. He's up to 20 at the moment. <laughs> Two level ones, that's awesome. That's awesome. Decent. They do Bad try and find the toss. Snowball on top of him. Zules used by Fatalness, but the lockdown is there from Turtle King, and he might just get him one more duel win. Can he get it? Yes, he can. 40 duel damage, and that is more than Smiley at the moment. Is it 10 20? I thought it was 10 14. Huh. Yeah, it's, I, I think that might have been changed recently. Okay. Because, yeah, that's I could have sworn you were right too when it was 10-14, but yeah, that's pretty strong. Scales by 10 every single level. Doing a little bit of scouting is the Enchantress with the Centaur here, but Ka might be looking for more dual kills. Up in 15. You get a TP top lane from Baboon. I mean, do you take this fight here if you're people glad? I don't think you can give away this tier 2. This is kind of... Where they don't really have any map left. They need to wait for Weaver Lincoln's now a damage item. Is queuing up the old Rapira, which is pretty sick. <laughs> On the Weaver, is he? That's, what the that's fuck? fuck There's no awesome. way he buys this. That's fucking awesome. What a baller. There's no way he buys that. You you don't ever just like queue up a Rapier as a joke. Man, my whole life's a joke, so probably. <laughs> But anyways. <laughs> okay, so you're saying in real life you queue up rapiers. Okay. Pretty much. Uh, we need to kind of see big smokes uh, for people glad. Their team skills worse. And they're drastically behind on towers. They have one and then two half towers, which don't really count for anything. But uh, you're seeing like now they're just jammed on the map, where Legion and Axe are both kind of hoping that heroes just go play AFK. And like side lanes, which it won't happen. But you're seeing now how they're just trying to defend a high ground. And they're giving up the other 60% of the map to 70%. They will look for a smoke. I think they're realizing their timing starting, or their window starting to close. And maybe Co they can find a kill onto right the Ursa. Over. You get the duel, but can they get the damage? It's not quite there. 
They don't get the duel win. They've just taken away the Aegis, and now they all need to back away. Hopefully get out of here unscraped. They That's a really pretty benefit. good kill. Uh, I mean, if they, they're going to lose their lives here, I don't really think it was too worth it. They used the Mars ult the opposite of really how it's supposed to be used, but it still might find them two kills. Is J-Mac also going to get caught out? Shane's not up on Mamex Squire, but it does not matter. I didn't even know there. you could do that. That's awesome. Yeah. Ka could maybe die to Mondo here. This is getting chased down, but obviously you can just skill the Sakuchi. Lincoln's popped. Can't quite steal that yet, but going for the TP away. They get the Yules from Fatalness as they had Vision into the Spear. Mondo is going to die now. And that is a complete disaster for People Glad. All, only to get Aegis out of that. That's going to slow down the Rapier time right there, man. The, you're not wrong. That is, in fact, a true <laughs> statement. I actually like their uh, play there, but they... I think if they would have ran to Radiance Triangle, they could have uh, continued fighting. Because you can't really run from Radiant's team. Oh, mid lane too. This is just easy for Phantomless. Blink into the Yule, Spear back into the stun from Lich, into the lift. Do they have the burst? No, they don't. He's able to pop and get into a snowball after the wand, but he's still going to die to right clicks. Nice combo there coming out from Mike and the Muppets, and they're starting to look really strong in this game, finding a foothold. Nice. Yeah, I, this has become a really difficult game for people glad, I think. They're kind of just getting ran over. Fatalist can initiate however he wants. Yeah, it was a huge momentum team. Like, uh, a lot of stuff had to go right for Dyer to win. Which you've also heard that it's like explained as like one team had to, like it was easier for them to play. Like it was uh, simpler. I don't know the correct term here. So you're saying that this lineup could have won. It's not necessarily yeah, yeah, yeah. a draft win. It's kind of if just... They, yeah. Oh, it's a huge, it's a huge draft win, but they had to continuously run forward, and you're seeing how they're doing a lot of sitting on hills and sitting in lanes and waiting for stuff to happen, and that's why it's not being successful for people. Glad, like we've seen the smoke on Ursa, I think was the first one, but there was never any uh, support help or mid help to the lane where Axe was at, and so Axe had to then wait, which means Legion had to wait. And so you got in a huge waiting game, and that's why, and that's how you lose 10k gold in 23 minutes. Oh, we might get a similar play up top. Again, they found Kawhi's, and this time, can they get the duel win? No, they don't, but they still get the kill. Unfortunately, no, the duel misses, and he just turns it back on the puck. Two kills, turning it around. I don't even know how he does it. He just goes 5v1 and gets two kills somehow. That is some Havo shit right there. Maybe they even find Mondo because they got rid of the Lincolns. They get the Lich ult. He is able to pop the ult away. And now Kuz, the only one to chase here, has the Sakuchi. If he wants to continue to chase, getting rid of the Lincolns yet again. Baboon does pops and dust. McGuire is going to be the first one to jump in here if he wants to continue to go. Throws the Spirit forward, getting their chains back onto Baboon. They have a spear as well. Coming from Fatalness gets the kill. So there we saw uh, Puck, the Axe player, like stack his call, which got him murdered, which sucks. But it was a good like uh, first play. They just spent a lot of time like teasing on Dire, like trying oh, to keep. Uh, this is Yule's popped onto J Mac into the spear, looking for the duel this time on the support in the Lich, but he still just barely has enough damage. Finally getting a win onto the Legion, and now he'll overtake the Rubik, getting up to 50 dual damage. But nice. it's still a very big timing between those dual wins. But yes, continue. I don't even remember what I was saying, man. I'm so... Uh, it, it was something about the Axe call. On going oh, it was, just, it was just a stun stacking, so he lost the gold for the kill and the XP. So he lost a kill on a level 18 hero at the time, when he was level 11, which would have given him like three levels, even in the group kill. Which also hurts him again because he's buying Halberd. Yeah. And so just like crazy. losing the the bounty there from dying is a rough one. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure how we killed the uh, the enchantress there. He just dies, man. He only has level two heal. No oh, bracer. Oh, because of the battle fury. That was literally all just battle fury. Uh... Uh, what? That killed Enchantress, right? In the fight top? 
Wasn't that basically the one that just, just happened where he got pitted? Darissa just slapped uh, him with, with overpower, yes. brother. <laughs> Darissa Wait, just slapped change? him with overpower. Yeah. I thought he was just hitting the axe the whole time and it changed was far away. I don't know. Maybe I read that wrong. Oh, oh, the one where yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's what happened, but. That was a little silly. Happening a lot. But Enchantress is just so squishy, though. Only 1,100 health on this hero. Like... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of questionable items in the inventory. But well, uh, There's only six max, so uh, they can't be too Yeah. Much. Yeah, that's what you think. Then you count <laughs> the skills, and that's 10. Then you... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so the no, well, technically it would be 20... Well, the amount of levels you can put into the skills too, so it scales. Pog champ. Okay. Okay. Oh, Mondo this... only a thousand away from the rapier. That's gonna be pretty awesome. Oh no, he's still buying this. I, I mean, it does. I give, it just does dies. Give him a We've seen him die so many times. Like, just because you have a linkage doesn't make you safe. Okay, but if his team does start the fight. He comes pretty close to just like insta giving the Rubik and the uh, Lich. Lich. Because neither oh, of those heroes have a duel. I had the camera off of it, but I think with the spear, they can actually make this Lich survive. If it's a long lasting duel, he does eventually die, but you don't get the damage for it. Three trapped inside the Mars ult, and they might just try and focus down Mondo. Was able to pop the ult, get a lot of his HP back, but down goes the axe, and now Mondo's going to be the main target. Can they get some stun? Yes, they do. Uh, dead. Weaver, that delays the rapier yet again, and now Baboon jumping back in. They get the yeah, buyback as right. well from Tusk. Is Phelan is still going forward? Is going to get the spear back? No. Not quite. Yeah, so there we're seeing, you know, what was mentioned earlier, where Weaver had his ulti and Sakuchi. But when he ultied, he was still in Mars ulti. Yeah. So he wasn't really... You know, reset. He was still in the danger zone. The bone zone, you can call it. I don't, I don't know if it's the bone zone. I kind of like the danger zone. It could zone be. One. It's like a Top Gun. <laughs> Isn't that a song from Top Gun? I don't even know who sings that. You seem like a person that would know. Dude, all I know is eat hot fries. What? What is that? Oh, I think J-Max is- oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> yeah, he died, man. He just got two shot by it or so. That <laughs> is something that died. <laughs> You need to die pretty fast. <laughs> you know, one of the changes I'm still not very sure of is the, uh, the Abyssal one, where heroes just get to jump around. Dude, I, I love it so much because Abyssal was really boring when it's just like you had to be right next to them. I think it gives melee heroes more viability. Like... Yeah. But it's just kind of a wild item. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to just watch like ninja shit pretty much. Rapier is going to be up on the Weaver. He could take Enchanted Quiver, which adds even... Yeah, he does. Which adds 400 damage and the Rapier is locked in. MX Goy. Watch him just instantly die. Like I hope so. I hope so. They're gonna look They're gonna bait the bait the remnant here? Maybe. MX Squire. And it's gonna Yules off the snowball stun. Maybe looking for the initiation is smiley. He needs to find a target for the duel, but backing off for now, maybe they go for a smoke instead. Yeah, they need you know, this is times where you need stuff to go forward. And just fighting on your hill. This could go really good, actually. They're running away They're from the good position, Phelan. This is just jumping forward. No fear. Finds Baboon. Uses the Marsal. Keeping everybody locked out. But into the duel. Onto the support. They bring down one in the Lich. But you're still going to lose Puck yet again. Meaning all your lockdown is gone. And I don't think Mondo can really add much to this fight. Because, again, Kawhi's is just exploding J-Mac. At least you get a return kill and a duel win. But, I mean... Lose that, would, that should have been so good for people glad there. They walked up the hill with no vision and a rapey reveal Weaver. But they gave up the hill. Weaver ran away. <laughs> it feels like Weaver's just really afraid of getting caught in the Mars Alt. And it's not even a great one from Fatalist. He only catches one hero inside of that. 
Oh, Smiley no back into the tower. Smiley is probably dead here. Mondo returning. Smiley no buyback. And not much to do from Mondo even. Like, how do you even approach this? You gotta be so afraid of just getting speared back into the team. You do have that. Gotta up. go get the call. Looking for this call, or at least the throw back from the Rubik is gonna get called underneath the tier three tower. Maybe looking for something, but the Abyssal on top of the Mondo is able to get the ult off just barely. He was one hit away from dying, and now Faderless looking pretty dead here, looking for the punch, but he just gets it off after the wall pushes him back. Baboon trying to run this one out. Not gonna happen. The call from Puck is on two. Maybe Mondo can finally focus somebody down, but I don't even think he's hit a single hero during this fight. There's the first right click he's gotten, and his entire team is just dying around him finally killing Ka because of the rapier but yeah Mondo did a whole shambles. lot of waiting there I guess he's kind of waiting for BKB and it was really unfortunate that the Legion commander died before everything started maybe that changes something somehow but well, you saw a lot of the times He's going to chase the Lich out of the base. This is pretty free if Turtle King doesn't go for the TP right now. Bugs do miss and he jukes him out. Turtle King runs back to the low ground. And should be uh, able to TP right now. In four seconds. Yeah, Mondo just has no idea. It's unfortunate for sure. So maybe the BKB on Weaver really changes stuff because I'll just kind of be able to slap and they'll only be stunned or disrupted by uh, the Abyssal Blade. Zeroscape, you said that about the rapier. Yeah, man, you know, <laughs> I, I I know what I said, and then I watched the guy just, like, not play with his axe there. So, you know, I'm in his shoes where I'm not very confident in myself. And, you know, something like that. You gotta try and make something happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, got, you gotta I... risk it for yeah. the biscuit, you know? It's gonna, you basically have to play a lot of gambling right now, and I think the rapier is the right idea. As Fatalness is gonna solo out somebody mid. This is very aggressive from Fatalness, as he might just lose his life for this. Baboon getting changed up. A lot of the rest of the team showing up. You get the duel on MX Wire, but can they get the hits? No! The stun is there from the Rubik. You still get the duel win into the spear, but Mondo dropping very low. Do they have the damage? Yes, they do! Rapier on the deck. Kawhi's picks it up. That is a rapier on an Ursa, and I think that just means game over for people, Glad. You cannot deal with this Ursa anymore. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> he got speared into the ice shards, I believe, is what happened yeah. there. <laughs> that one's rough. A lot of targets for this spear to connect with, and down goes Mondo. Does spend the buyback, but he does not have any damage at all with that rapier gone. Little Dennis slow. Looks for the spear. What teamwork right there. Lift in the spear. And still no GG called him. A little surprised by that because it feels like we're pretty much over we're on playing this. Playing to the end, baby. I can, I can respect that. And the end. You get bug stolen. They get the dust on top of Mondo, but out comes All the right. Marzal. Can't ult out of this one. The spear misses, unfortunately. Able to pop the Yules. Looking for the duel is Smiley. He has a BK up very soon. So get the snowball into the Lich, gets the kill, duel on top of the Rubik, the win is there. They're making something happen after losing the mid racks. They stick around a little bit too long, maybe they can chase Felonis a bit more, but look at this TP spot. Nobody finding him, this TP so long, but it doesn't matter. It's a shrine. Oh man. I feel like Muppets would be in little babies there, could have had the Ursa just punch a few people. He's literally doubling the net worth of the next closest person and that's the person on his team as long as you get gifted 7,000 gold brother this is a true gift you know what I mean like it falls from the sky he didn't even need to build anything next like he's 4,500 keg or 4,500 gold like he has a satanic you might as well just build another rapier right honestly sell the treads it's great <sighs> that'd be awesome I vibe I vibe uh, no, he's right. probably just gonna play it safe, but like... All right. so I'm not too sure how Dire stops their team from getting mauled by the big angry bear. But, but. let's say they have blade mills, I think. One. I I think Ursa almost loses a quarter HP if you duel him. But he just pops now. in rage, and then he doesn't care about your blade mill. Or, or are you just trying to like stay positive right now? I respect that. 
I'm looking at win conditions, man. And I'm telling you, there's not a whole lot. <laughs> it's a very I... slim chance, but you're saying there is a chance. Ooh, Mondo only 3,000 gold away from the rapier number two. Uh, it's a blink forward from Ka, not quite finding the initiation there. Baboon might be the target instead. Kawhi is just running forward. Everybody else in the high ground now looking for the duel. They do get it. He is dropping very low, but I don't think it's enough. He's able to pop the enrage after. Even after the taunt, he just survives through all of this. Two instantly gone, and now Baboon is going to die next. The big bad bear getting two kills. MX Squire picking up one. JMac dropping as well. Double kill for the two cores. And Mondo, the last remaining, remaining survivor, but JMac's just going to end it early. A nice one third HP done on the blade mill is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean they almost did it. Yeah, they're he, they had kind of times to play where if Weaver goes on like the axe or with the axe, he can kind of like try to tickle there and then like run away. But they were it looks like they weren't talking at all, like they weren't communicating that at all. But uh, a little wild. Little wild. We do jump into game two. All right. Get out of here. Oh, we joined together. Yeah. That's oh. part two. Oh, you're not in my party. I need to change. I didn't. Party. I didn't even like click. That's awesome. That is awesome. Here we go. I, I think that's a really strong showing from Mike and the Puppets. Like, Muppets. Not Muppets. Puppets is Smack. No. I, I, I got it. Well, no, Albert, that's Albert. Albert. That's Albert. And the Puppets. Mike and the Muppets. Mr. Tricks and the Trumpets. I don't uh, know what their, the last one is. Uh, Mr. Tricks and the Manlets. So not actually the same thing, but kind of the same thing. So what we saw there was just like the... Too many plays going top. Like going away from their carry and towards your carry. Which, as you stated, with the 4 Protect 1 meta, with how easy it is for carries to get gold now, you want the game to get away from your carry and towards their carry. And they played it the opposite way. But, uh... So what you saw was they tried to like isolate the axe against Ursa. Like, what they were hoping for was that the, le the Lich would TP top. And that axe could slow down Ursa. But Lich had no reason to move because they could even lose top. Like, heroes could die top. And as long as X was super behind, because he got blink at the 15 minute mark, and then they mess up the fight. But just having naked blink, like phase blink, isn't very good at 15 minutes for X. On like an OK X game, you want your uh, third or second item by then. So like either blink blade mill, blink vanguard, whatever you buy, depending on the X player. But they kept putting the game in front of their weaver instead of in front of their X, and that's why things went bad. If you want, what's Maku? What's Maku? Yeah, that's what the, that's what your flag is. It's Macau. What's Macau? Uh, it's a country. Is that... I don't know where. Where? It is. I think it's in. Hold on, we're gonna do some learning. I'm not gonna say anything because I legit have no idea. Macau. Across from Asia. The Pearl River Delta from Hong Kong. Yes, it is in. Very southern China. I did not know it was on sovereign state. Oh no, People's Republic of China owns it. Of course. And I could get banned from Twitch for apparently for saying that it's its own country. But, nah, screw it. <laughs> Macau is a, is a territory so rich that it even pays its citizens. Residents of the tiny Chinese city receive an annual check from the government because they have such a massive surplus of money from casino profits. Damn, dude. Tiny Macau took, overtook Las Vegas in 2006 to become the world's most successful dude, gambling it's destination. seven times larger than Las Vegas. <laughs> what the fuck? I need to go gambling in Macau, apparently. Nah, 
that's pretty That's cool. awesome. I didn't even know this thing. Well, I didn't know it existed, but I didn't know it was like a gambling city. And where is it? It's in China. Like southern China. South East China. It's near Hong Kong. Huh. Bro, we just started a fucking rain. What? Big brain. You learn something new every day. <sighs> yeah. Sure. Maybe. I'll agree. What did you learn yesterday? What I learned yesterday? Fuck, what did I learn yesterday? Did you learn anything yesterday? You could just say no. No, I probably did. Give me a minute. Uh... Oh, I learned that foster parents get a fuck ton of money for raising a disabled kid. What? So, like, if you adopt a kid with autism, right? So, like, an autistic kid is fostered, and, like, in a foster home, and you adopt them, you get, like, uh, 3500 a month. Dude, this is not... That's not enough money to raise a kid. You know that. 3500 a month to raise a kid? Do you think it's worth 3500 a month to do that? So... I was talking to... Like, I was with my old football coach. Because I peaked in high school and I have nothing better to do. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, is there a today? Yep, I, I can tell. Okay. So, they had their kids when they were, like, 20 and 21. And so, now they're 40. Really young age to have kids, but it can no, die. But that is just what they did. So their kids are like both graduated, you know, and they're gone and they're out of the house. And so they're both 40 and they're like, hey, you know, we're too young to just chillax. And so they're looking at adopting kids. And it got brought up to me that you make a fuck ton of money for doing so it. So the first thing that came out of their mouth instead of, hey, let's adopt somebody is, whoa, we get paid to adopt somebody. Well, they didn't know they were getting paid for it. They thought they just sure, got sure. you know. Okay. So there's no blur in terms of that. But, but like, I mean, even still, like, I, I think you're underestimating the amount of cost raising a child is. Maybe dude, there's no way it costs $3,500 to raise a kid. A month? Yeah, no way. I, I feel like you would barely make enough money off of it. Plus, you also have to pay for college at some point in the future, so you probably no, 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 no. Like the that. state does that for foster kids. Oh, does it? Yeah. yeah. Which state? They pay for if you. It's really easy. It's like if you graduate like a two point six. GPA. But what colleges can you go to? Any state college. In the state or any other. Any. State? It might just well. be in the state. I don't know. Because That's I, I feel like it sounds amazing, but also there was a Futurama episode about this. So probably not the most like profitable idea. Well, I mean, it wasn't like for the money, but like I feel like $3,500, there's no way like a straight additional like, t you know, because they already, they already both work. Right. Well, one doesn't work because she's on disability. But there's no way it costs thirty five hundred dollars to raise a kid. I mean, I'm just thinking Xeriscape trying to raise a children for thirty five hundred dollars a month. That would go in easily. Easily. So you're gonna adopt some kids now, dude. I could raise a kid for thirty five hundred dollars a month without a doubt. Okay, let's get rid of the thirty five hundred dollars a month and just start at I could raise a kid though. I could raise a kid. That's what I did, bro. That's I worked daycares until recently. Then I was gonna start doing. True. Okay, okay, that's pretty. Like, good. dude, it was awesome. I feel then like I was gonna start more to raising a kid than just like daycare knowledge, but. Well, like I'm good with kids. You know what I mean. Sure. sure. But uh. As long as you get them to play Dota, you could create your own dude, League of Lads Dota team with all of not. your foster kids. I didn't even show like my IRL friends this game. Are you embarrassed to play Dota? Dude, I was a football guy until after high school, where I peaked. <laughs> You're the one saying that. 
This just seems weird. Like, basically, everybody that played sports in high school also played video games. So, like, it, literally nobody cared. I didn't play. I played probably like per year in high school, less than a hundred hours of video games per year. And then after high school, I stopped being able to be a functioning human being in society because I didn't have a leg. And that's when I started playing this game. But anyways, this is an exact copy paste of what the VG LGD openings were. Yeah. But it was like Bloodseeker. Fuck, I was looking at it today. It was always like Bloodseeker, Snap, IO, Tiny, Mag, Doom. We're like the bands always. Lena. What the fuck? I like it. It's like you can flex at mid, you can also put uh, it. Yeah, 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 I like this hero. But I don't think it's a good hero against Lean. <laughs> and the IO Gyro Strat coming out too. Like, If anybody can pull it off, I think it's Mike and the Muppets. Because every single game I've watched them, they've had like incredible communication between the players. Uh, um, and I think Io Gyro is definitely a lineup where you do need to have a lot of cooperation in your team. You can't just kind of do your own thing. I think Io Gyro is kind of outdated because the reason Io Gyro was great was because of the Ags talent for Io. And then it was great because Gyro was a strong carry with like the Heaven Talbert, you know, like the Ag Satanic. Heaven's Halberd build, like where Sage and Heart would give you so much health amp. But now that like both those core things are banned uh, or you know gone on Gyro, I think this combo is just outdated. Mm -hmm. It's like similar to like Io Tiny, to where what made it great is just no longer in the game. Dude, so you're kind of taking an active carry and trying to make him a hyper carry, but what made him a great hyper carry is no longer in the game. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Shout out. Shout out to Ka for yeah. So this is this is one of my here. favorite IO partners is other Titan. I um, think they run IO ET and lane. Like that actually sounds really strong. Yeah. Usually it's three IO when ET and IO are played together. But I feel like if you lock Gyro, you want IO. F I don't know. They pick an Underlord into that. This seems like an incredibly Mike and the Muppets favorite lineup, and that's only because they pick the ET. That's my only reasoning. Underlord's pretty good into Gyro. Ten seconds remaining. You could see... It's part of like Gyro starting with like 44 damage. And Underlord reducing that again by 12%? Yeah, for the lane, sure. Yeah. I just think in fights, Underlord's gonna have a hard time staying alive. Even if he buys the utility items you normally have to go for. It's because ET really pumps out the damage. And then you're also gonna benefit from... Io Balls having zero magic resistance on the other team. Same thing for Gyro, because essentially in the first like 30 minutes of the game, he's a very heavy amount of magical damage coming from that hero. So both of these heroes combo incredibly well with the ET at the moment. They don't have a lot of ways to cancel a stomp right now, which is a really big deal playing in ET. You don't have a lot of guaranteed stuns other than you know these delayed things from Lina, but it's hard to get on top of him. I think people glad could benefit from going for like a clockwork or something right now, but they just don't have the space for it since they already picked their two supports. Yeah. Um, well, I think we're looking at mid snap fire for Lena mid underlord or uh, offline underlord, and underlord is laneable into gyro, but you have to play for hood, like as fast as you can possibly hood. Mm. Um, cause well, once... I thought that's what you said they were doing, right? Just because you start with 44 damage on the gyro, and you're going to get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. This is MX for Kunkka, like, very soon. Kunkka, it's probably not too great against Snapfire. Maybe it is. I don't know. Was that banned? Uh, last game? Or no, 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 no. And, like, against Snapfire. Oh, there's a few mid snap player games, but no. 
Um, uh, I don't think you run Lena mid at this point. Uh, I don't know. The Rast seems pretty similar. I don't know who wins that. Uh, Lena kind of gets crushed yeah, by Conqueror. Yeah. Because you really don't have that much base. You can miss and pretty squishy. That's uh, a pretty nice awesome nice stealer pick. Really? I mean, like I said, you're dealing with a lot of magic damage. It doesn't feel awful, especially... It's really good heroes. against other Titan. Besides Morphling, Lifestealer is probably the best counter against Gyro. He doesn't give a fuck about Io. He doesn't really care about Konka. Because uh, Lifestealer isn't really like a burst hero. You know, Wait, like a you just said hero. it was a bad Lifestealer game. What? Did you say it was a bad life stealer pick? I don't know. It's pretty good. It's oh, uh. I hear you. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna it's a little. You. It's a little weird with their like heroes around it. Okay. Cause now I kind of feel like they're gonna last pick their four or their five. Excuse me. You but really I'm not even that Lina against. Snapfire is going mid. I. It looks the best. It looks really good having mid Snapfire. I don't think you can. I feel like if you put Snap Five here, you're making your team. Um, like there's nothing to stun people. You know what I mean. Like here, you could sure. go wyvern or witch doctor or venge. Also, stuff like this that just like simply stuns and it makes your game incredibly simple to play. Snapfire eggs with life stealer inside of underlord. You just throw <laughs> underlord into the fight. <laughs> Fucking send in it. <laughs> I'd actually like to see both teams pick a five here, as crazy as that sounds. I uh, I don't, I mean, I still like IO as five, and that's what China plays it as like exclusively. They had one four IO, where ZinQ played it. But I think like with position three IO, and four other Titan, and you just pick a good laning here with Gyro, like uh, Witch Doctor, something like this, or like a hero that beats Underlord. Your games like are a lot smoother. I feel like uh, these teams could just four protect one like both each side, and it's more correct than picking, you know, an off lane or a mid hero here. For sure. Cause like both teams are just missing something very small from their team fights. They're both gonna ban out. Well, Mike and the Muppets ban out the Grimstroke, so maybe they're thinking support hero. Monkey is probably a four if anybody picks it, but. Oh, Didn't you say OD at some point? You yeah, I said, it, I said it last game because I was predicting Kanka. Oh, but shit, they, dude. It's just so Did slow. Did you just predict their draft in this game from last game? That's like... Uh, it's up. just like knowing people's heroes. But I don't really like... Ten seconds remaining. So now the way they have to play is that Underlord has to jam every movement. So he has to kind of follow Kanka and just sit in front of his lane and just... Uh, but like, Odie doesn't fit in because you already had the good carry matchup with Lifestealer. Like, where Lifestealer, if you stopped the game and made it a 4v4 forever, that Lifestealer is going to win, as long as the 4v4 is equal. Or, you know, slightly worse. But now, like, adding the OD, you have another hero you have to protect. So, like, that's why the point of the Snapfire was Snapfire isn't a hero you need to protect ever. He's very strong in lane. He's always going to get his Ags, you know, before 20 minutes. And that's going to be like his peak usefulness. All right. Well, the Wind Ranger feels kind of weird, but this is a signature MX Squire hero. Yeah. So, yeah, it so it's just to get pick. fatal. It's just to get um, Kunk out of middle. But uh, again, yeah. I'm just it's not Turtle a fan. King five uh, ET. Apparently, Turtle King's been playing ET five in pubs a lot. So. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I uh, I think there was more correct stuff to do here, with simplifying both teams' games. Cause like, how do or how does either team like team fight? What are they hoping for? I think ET makes your team fights really easy. I I think you're underestimating ET. There. ET isn't. He doesn't add anything to your team. He just makes everything better. Disagree. No, no, no. He's just like an amp to everything. He doesn't change the game state at all. Disagree. Like, he, he makes uh, certain edgy heroes, Terrorblade, uh, Morphling, like, worse. Like, where their survivability is their armor. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't say he's exclusively an amp, though. I think Stomp but, does add a lot to your team fight because trying to deal with Stomp in a team fight really fucks you up. Like, 
People underestimate Stomp all the time. I just don't think that hero really sh ch changes the game state. He just he just adds damage to everything. Like he makes things die faster. <sighs> but uh, I I think it also speeds up your lineup quite a bit too. If yeah, that's that's like part of just making things better, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of his game state thing. Uh, so win runner against OD. I think OD is fine, in, right? Because wind is lower damage. Top lane. Top lane can go really good for uh, the Underlord player. If he understands, or if he gets hood before six minutes, well, he'll never die to the lane. He can just sit and make the IO gyro leave. But uh, I'm not a fan of both teams shifting away from 4P1. I don't like what they did. I so thought that the uh, people glad would be really happy making their life so the win condition for the whole game. But they add like a lose condition where if the OD is useless, things are really sad. 30 seconds to battle. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, very genius words from Zyrescape. I also like the accent too. Appreciate that. I just think both these teams made their games harder. This is what I'm trying to get at, but in a really long way. Not. It seems like both of these drafts have been kind of weird. Like, yeah. just back and forth, nobody really taking over from the draft stage of the game. So both teams trade runes, but neither. Bottom. But MX Squire gets to blog. Yeah, so put the IO Gyro together. Which I... I don't really like, because this kind of forces two fives. Because Elder Titan is going to ruin his game, I think. Or he's going to play four. Which is kind of, I think, the more correct thing with what they're doing. But I think it was fine to put the lane IO with Fatalness. Or IO with the Kunkka. Because then it kind of stops Mondo from dominating him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and honestly, like, and then ET gyro is a very ET? yeah. You probably put a couple levels into natural order, um, and just get that minus magic res out the gate, and you can try and make something happen with the gyro. Yeah, and it's also kind of like the you know melee range, melee range you want in your side lanes. But that's life. Mm -hmm. I do think Turtle King should be really aggressive right now. He's gonna—he's about to get two heroes plus a couple of creeps with this spirit, and if he's up in the lane with Fatalness, they can just start bopping on Mondo, who doesn't have too much regen outside the tangos. Obviously, it's a life stealer, so you don't really care. But yeah. Also, I don't really like other Titan bottom because it's kind of hard to walk forward into Snapfire. Oh, look at that damage! Snapfire's gonna turn Q. Oh, well, Mondo That's isn't gonna a help. A little actually. strange that yeah, there he's gonna go back into Mondo. A lot of damage into the life stealer. He's able to life steal some of that back though. But you'll see like when level two starts, where life stealer is gonna like open wounds, and it's gonna be really hard for Turtle King to like walk forward. He's gonna get like open wounds and then cookied and then chased. But. That depends on like how if J Mac understands what other Titan does in lane. Just kind of let your core tank this. Yeah, he, he, honestly, even if Life Steal summons the HP back, to you, you probably don't need too much regen on Life Stealer anyway, because Open Wounds gives you Open Wounds gives you so much Life Steal as well, and then plus the extra attack speed from Beast, like the fact that he's laning against two strength heroes, and Beast gives you percentage based on max XP, so. J Mac could. I don't think he's gonna die here. Unfortunately, Torrent misses from Fatalness, but still a decent amount of harass. We will look mid to. This looks pretty even at the moment. 10, 4. Actually, no. Smiley's just kind of dominating this one. Doubling the CS almost of MX Choir. At least he was there for a bit. Yeah, so he double waved him. And, uh. 
Oh, bottom. We just lose Snapfire. Turtle King getting first blood is taking a lot of tower shots here too, but might be able to find a courier. Does Mono getting a lot of hits into Turtle King might be able to get a return kill here, but he doesn't have open wounds for a bit. Going for the stomp connects. Kunkka is nowhere near over here. Able to pop us out. Might just try and turn it on to Mondo, but who has the damage? It might be Turtle King. No, it's eventually going to go to Mondo. It's so close. But Mondo just barely survives with the lifesteal. Turtle King is extremely happy with that. Uh, other Titan and Undying kind of do the same thing. Where they just, uh, you know, Undying just trades his mana until he's done. And then other Titan trades Ch raids his HP and then just dies. Because now he's ready to go fucking crazy again. Which is cool. Oh, you gotta be careful with your courier on Gyro. Baboon is over here, gets one hit into it. Can't quite get the second. Can't really get too much stun follow up here too. But they might try and chase just a bit because Ka's getting a little low. But maybe they can chase Baboon instead. Rocket is flying out if Kawai's wants to die for this. But no. Just a little bit of a stun. Oh my god, level 2 spirit now too on Turtle King. And he is just Fast, chunking man. these heroes. He shouldn't... Mario needs to like bring himself regen and stuff. Because they really can just click the other titan. And make him run away with the spirit. Oh, and he still doesn't have magic immunity on Mondo. The right clicks should be enough. Yes it is, Turtle King getting the kill onto Mondo this time. And the tip thrown right back at him. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> you good? My dog like snored and I didn't know my dog was in my room. Oh god. It spooked. But anyways, that was uh really bad with what the life they just did there. This lane shouldn't be that bad for them, really. Oh, you might just get a kill on then J-Mac too. Nope. Not gonna dive under the tower this time. It's so like uh, really a lot of gotta help the homies here, you know? And I feel like both J-Mac and Mondo like aren't helping each other's homie. And we're gonna see... Homies. I mean, I, I see what you're saying. Like he's not turning around to stop the other Titan from clicking him. And that's a lot of their issue. Mm -hmm. And this bottom lane is they're not helping each other. Because if they just use mana on other Titan when he walks up, other Titan is gonna lose a lot of HP. But you're seeing a lot of like running away. Which yeah. is what, you know. Yeah, it, it just seems like they're very. Uh, J Mac had the right idea early on. You're right. Like just turning around, popping the Scatter Blast instead of just backing away immediately. And Babis got chased to the camps right there. And was able to just TP out in front. But that does leave Io in front to stack the camps. And this is kind of why Dire Side is like equalized. And we saw LGD. Not LGD. Oh. The one that picks techies. Uh. Aster? Uh, 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 no, it was LGD. LGD was actually prioritizing Dire Side because of how easy it is to stack the camps. Because, like, uh, on Dire, you can stack those two camps that IO just stacked. Mm -hmm. And you can stack the Ancients, both uh, guaranteed. Like, you can double stack tw your two sides of camps. And on Radiant, it's not really possible. Besides, mm -hmm. like, the one right next to mid. But those planes... He needs to go for the chain way. out. Is going to take a lot of damage right here, but I don't think he's going to die because he does have that. Yeah, just gets stunned and moves. Yeah. Pretty hard for Alino Pitlord to get a kill in this lane. In fact, they might just go after Baboon instead. Stun connecting for Baboon this time. I don't have a rocket out yet for the Lena. Yeah, that was a strange no rocket there. So Smiley's having a good time middle. Going for the kill on Windrunner, which that he does is get. Popping the alts, and that is a dead MX Squire. Yeah, so that's kind of disastrous for what ends up being their last pick to die and like lose middle. Which is what I'm saying again about them, like, uh, you know, both teams making it too complicated. Like, they're giving themselves more lose conditions than they are give, like uh, solving their win condition. Mm hmm. That's a team like what Maximum Wage is really good at, where they make their win condition as easy as oh, possible. Oh, Phantomless is rotated mid. He just used the Astro on top of Smiley. Boat comes in as well into the Torrent, connects on both of them. And now MX Choir with the ult doesn't connect on this Shackle shot, but it doesn't matter. They do get a return could kill. have saved him. 
I think you have a I wonder. <laughs> Smile also has. It train. would have been close. Oh. Like. Oh, you, you can cookie during the um, lift of Torrent, and it'll. You know, like it moves them. And that's always cool. So it breaks up like the bow combo? Yeah. Oh, that's what I was true. trying to yeah, refer yeah. to. Because it wasn't quite like perfect outside the X day. As Smiley does rotate bottom, you get the Astral on top of ET. They're going to look for Fatalness instead. Might be able to get both even. Fatalness is almost surely going to drop and Now they'll focus back into it's Turtle King. Smiley doesn't Ooh. have Astral up for a bit, but Turtle King might be able to outrun this one with the Tranquils. And yes, he will. Smiley's able to back off. So the Underworld actually... And Squire rotated. I think he rotated to look for the Lina, and then the Lina just shows. And it's kind of hard for them to kill Underlord. Because when, when he uses ulti, we'll be clicking for like 30 damage or some shit like that. Yeah, not really going to add up to much over time. And now... I'm kind of upset in the Underlord for going Greaves. But uh, they're not really punishing with... They're not really punishing oh, with... Just gets a curry they're not really punishing with the Iowa Gyro, where they're trying to like force their lane. They're just trying to. They're gonna go take uh, camps, which is okay. But I feel like you never really want to give up your safe lane. I feel like right now taking your off lane and safe lane towers are more important than taking middle. And that's why we see, you know, like all these spirit heroes and monkey king heroes being played middle and snap fires and stuff like that because they're both really. They're all really good at rotating. But instead, we see like uh, Mike and the Muppets okay with giving up position. So, like, imagine right here if there was a Snapfire walking up to come secure this top tower. Because he'd get the tower. Instead of the OD. Yeah, yeah. So, he'd get the tower. And they'd get, you know, in this position, they would have got, got three kills and both runes. But instead, they have another, like, greedy hero. And so it's hard for them to play forward. Like both teams, like there's a reason this game is three to three, and it's because both teams were picking very selfish stuff. Seems like they're really defensive on either team too, just kind of securing maybe the middle game, thinking they can both win it out. But I think Life Stealer kind of beats the Gyro in that aspect if they are trying to go for like this mid to late game win on either side. Sorry, you said what hero beats? Life Stealer beats out the Gyro yeah, 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 in yep, terms yep. of pause one. Yeah, which is why I was upset with them picking OD. Because, like, imagine if OD's game was bad. And they'd have to, you know, instead of letting Life Stealer take safe farm, they'd have to make OD take safe farm. But because <laughs> they picked, you know, another greedy hero with Windrunner, not greedy in terms of needing a bunch of items, but, like, greedy in terms of how strong their 10 minute fights are is a Turk very weird Mike all. They lane. immediately blow up the ET and now trying to kill Puck. Afterwards, it is a one-for-one, one, but a very strange one. This Turtle King just gets exploded by Baboon. Astral is going to go out onto the Kunkka. Smiley might just back from now. Does have the alt up. Shackle Shot not connecting, but they will chase Baboon underneath the tier one. The cookie is there. MX Squire can't quite get it. The power shot connects. They do get a stun back onto Smiley, who has an Astral very soon to try and turn this. I think he'll just back off yet again. Still looking for a chance to alt... No real mana difference right now, he's up to 900. A little bit of an oopsie there when he astraled the Konko, got stunned by Lina on the turn. But we're seeing better stuff, and uh, like right there was a perfect example of why... of Maybe this Underlord didn't play when Iowa, Gy or like when Iowa Gyro was really strong, where it's just a bunch of magic damage for another like 25 minutes. And so I feel like he's making Greaves with the intention of you know, just healing instead of thinking about what's going to block the most damage. Like there, if he had a hood, he wasn't going to die. But because he has arcane mech, it was really easy for their team to burst through the 1400 HP that he have because it was all magic damage. But now we're seeing on mid lane, mech and the Muppets collapsing. I try and find a kill. J-Max actually rotated over, so he should be able to push this one back a belt to pick up level 6 too, which he does. And, and this is what I... Go ahead. Uh, 
Kaj is sticking with Kawhi's as well. Like, I don't think he's left the gyro side the entire game, and they're mm -hmm. really just trying to utilize the amount of, I guess, the, the more form that it gives you. But you look at the network chart, it's really not adding up to too much. He is on top, but only slightly. Yeah. So, like, right there, we saw kind of why it's better to take side lane towers because of how easy it is for everybody to defend middle. The middle lane is, like, super small. So, like, a team attacking a tower can't really sit in a bunch of places. They can sit on, like, the Radiant side here. If you can see pings, I don't know if we can. Yeah, yeah, I can. So, like, the only place Dyer can sit is here, which isn't, like, exactly great for pushing the tower. But Radiant can TP to the tower and attack from this angle. And speaking of that, they're actually going to go for a push mid, it looks like. Into the stomp. Does connect. Looking for the ultimate from Turtle King. It's a bit late, though. Because everybody's able to just walk outside of this. You get a decent amount of damage on the puck. But look at the two. Io Gyro just getting exploded after the ultimate from the OD. He needs to try and save himself after, though, because they're all just getting exploded. Trying to get the kill onto Kawhi's eventually does. So you kill off the core, but lose four. Luckily, during this whole time, look at bottom. Mondo was just free farming at the moment. Yeah, if Mondo would have TP, they would have won. And what we saw there was just the flip side of what I was describing on how aggressive, like how hard it is to push middle lane. Because they just got grouped all in the river, because that's the only place they can attack from. And Dyer was able to attack from two angles. Because even if it wasn't the relocate, it would have just been, you know, the carry TPing in and Dyer's team fighting from the side. Now there's a TP in from Puck. They're not going to be able to kill him, it looks like, but still. Just lock them down, take the tier one, and might continue to try to push here. But they've lost their own tier one, and that makes it even harder. Yeah. 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 That's a yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it feels good to have Zero Escape agree with me on something. First time ever. Good, man. It's not the first time. There's been a couple of things. Sure. Potentially. Maybe on accident once or twice. Yeah. yeah. I guess. <laughs> uh, they might just be giving up mid though. Like mid tier one for bottom safe lane. I'm not sure that's the greatest trade for them. You get a double stun or at least one stun into fatalness. Gets them to back off and now they will take the tier one bottom protecting mid. It's exact it was perfectly fine for them to lose their tower. Because they've just flipped like the map state. But uh, they're able to like kill tower super fast with one air focus fire, and maybe they had oh they didn't even have cart. But they were really good in time to defend. Radiant wasn't really set up, which was kind of frustrating for them. And you're seeing now to where the OD still doesn't have that much effective. Oh mid, they're trying to go on the OD with the boat. There's a rotation in from Kawhi's. They might need to get the Astro on top of the OD, but that takes him out of the fight. Kawhi's is just getting annihilated right here. From the magic damage, they couldn't cancel out the ult from J-Mac. And that was just ill-advised. There's so many heroes here for Radiant, making the fight really easy. Huh. Yeah. So they have, uh, it's really easy to land like the Lena stun on the relocate targets because they both spawn in range of your stun AoE. Like when they do tether. Yeah. And it's also like the same thing with Underlord, where he just presses his QW. And they're gonna lose a bunch of health. So it's kinda it's kinda hard relocating for Mike and the Muppets there. Cause Cud just kinda murdered his carry player. He has to like relocate in a place where they get to walk in and respace out. But with them like relocating right on top of where they're casting spells, it makes it really easy for them to turn. Cause even with the OD not having Astro there, you saw that he didn't even really come close to dying. Yeah. I, I think you're kind of making a mistake on Turtle King 2 by going the eggs this early. Somebody needs to buy a Veil on this team, for sure, for making the Muppets. Like, you're going to benefit from that so much with all the magic damage you have, plus the negation from Natural Order. Um, either that, uh, they already have a Medallion on Kuka, so that's also really good, but I think if you just pick up a Veil on Turtle King, you're feeling a lot better about your team fight. I think he just wants to punch, man. Dude, it's not the play. Believe me, as a as the resident <laughs> ET player, is the only hero I can play at a high level. In my in my opinion, like you you don't go eggs until very late. But I also build the hero weirdly, so. Yeah, I I uh. 
So they did do the thing where Cuz just playing five this game, where he's buying all the wards. So I guess Turtle King just doesn't understand IO or doesn't play IO. I mean, but uh... wait, Turtle King doesn't play IO. What? Oh, well, that's what you'd assume, because Turtle oh, King so is a sure. five player, so and they're just role switching. Oh, it's five, sure. Yep. But like here, Dyer is in like the situation people glad was in, or Mike and the Muppets is in the situation people glad was, where they kind of need to get stuff to happen now, and that the fact that the game is eight nine really favors uh, people glad, because Underlord or not Underlord, Gyrocopter is not very good into any of the cores in this game. In fact, they're just going for a smoke on people glad right now. Might be able to find Fatalness. The cast range of that Astral with the eggs, perfect for this setup. And now Fatalness is just getting annihilated. A nice Shackle will elongate his life. Survives a little bit longer to get a Torrent off, but still not going to make a fight happen. Yeah, they're just not quite at their items yet. Kanka is just now at eggs, so now he needs to buy damage plus BKB. Windrunner is almost at MKB, so she needs MKB, Blink, BKB, stuff like this. And Turtle King is chilling, man. Turtle King is very dead, it looks like, unless he TPs very soon. His courier might not be able to escape this one. No, he's fine. He's fine. Stayed a little bit long. Almost too close for comfort, but... Wait. TP out mid from Phantom and they will look for that tier 2 top lane. Which could take a little bit, but Puck with the Guardian Greaves up there looking pretty healthy as a team. And he is now getting uh, pipe, you know, hood pipe. I think it's just a little backwards because all their damage is magical on uh, Mike and the Muppets. So, like, if he would have flipped these items, he probably would have never died, and they probably would have won an, like, an additional team fight. And I'd prefer them to defend their tower here instead of trading. Which is what they are doing. Yeah, but they're doing it with the Pit Lord. Looking for a stop, not going to come through though. Bring they just don't really through. have anybody to. Yeah, they jump forward, and Kawhi is still on the high ground. He wasn't able to get out of this, going to get stunned up. Shackle Shot does not connect, and just weird positioning there from the Gyro. They cannot kill Cup. Did that Laguna Blade just connect? That was really confusing. It, uh. So there's like the one it connects, and there's the damage instance, so you can like. Sure. So we healed and, probably just enough to survive that. No, no, no. It just it did like the animation, but the damage didn't go through. The damage Ooh. didn't connect. You can kind of block it. That's kind of just unfortunate timing there. Turtle King is able to get away with a drums pop. I is best. Still need to be careful where he walks though, because they might still try and find him in the trees over here, and he does not have TP for another couple seconds. No, he's good. And it's, well, it's really starting to look like People Glad is in control at the moment. Yeah, it's it's a lot of smooth sailing here. Like, um, Gyro's gonna be a rapier hero this game if they want a chance to win. Which it's, you know, it's, it's more, it's... Well, Mondo did it last game. Yeah, yeah, it's better. I was, I'm trying to think of the word better, sorry. It's better than what Weaver did last time. But it's still like not even great into life stealer because life stealer. Uh, Astral does go out onto the Kunkka immediately, but again he has eggs, so he can save himself once. Looking for the stomp after that second Astral boat does not connect, and now Turtle King can't even follow up with the all. But now they can get on top. He's still got an Astral off cooldown. You lose the ET. The stun is up on Kawhi's as well. They're trying to focus down Smiley, but again he's got another Astral very soon. Not enough. So eventually you bring down the OD for losing your ET. I think they might try and find J Mac, but he's able to cookie to the low ground and get away just fine. No, I don't think he's alive. Time. Oh, I'm actually stops chasing. Uh, they're playing away from their life stealer, which it's kind of backwards now. Where life stealer needs to kind of start getting stuff done. Like he needs to take two, three towers in the next ten minutes. Kind of but he's got to use his net worth, right? Because you can't really have. OD dying ever again. He's already kind of having a rough game. He's 2-3. And Lina isn't like a great 4 as far as like helping, you know, advancing the game goes. Lina's impact is kind of, you know, going down as the game progresses now. 
compared to stuff like Earthshaker or other stunning four yeah. heroes. It's like if your if your fours or your supports can't drive the game for you, the core needs to get more involved early on. Okay. But like uh, Babis on Lina did like his job this game. He stopped like the IO and Gyro from getting ahead. Um, it's kind of weird. They're going Roshan. Uh... Oh, they're just at the pit. So they're trying to advance forward, and maybe Babis is B. Uh, he's twelve hundred HP. They might have gotten pings out too. Like they know they're smoking. I they're think Elder Titan things. Spirit ran over a smoke. Yeah, hero. it did. It just depends on if he noticed or not. Alright. Isn't the sound around your hero and not around the spirit? Uh it's on the spirit. Okay. I trust that Turtle King saw it and that's why they're moving away. Yeah, he he might have just been watching the uh spirit as well. As but we should see again like where that. they're gonna all slap the tower and then glyph and rift down there. Immediately, yeah. We'll look for the tier two. You are able to get a stomp out of this, but yeah, they're still not gonna fight this, so we'll just back off. And again, all they're doing here two. is jamming the map. When you have the carry advantage, you just want the other team to be as frustrated as possible. Now Turtle That's... King running behind the tier two is a lot of TPs to try and find Smiley who's gonna get astral rooted afterwards as well. No way to get out of this if you're Turtle King. And yeah, this is a dead ET for sure. And that's actually big, because that's their Roshan defending hero. For 30 seconds. Can they take it in 30 seconds, though? It doesn't look like Mondo's positioning himself to go there. Hmm. So this is 11k gold on Mondo. Close behind is Gyro. About 500 gold behind, but... Still working on it. MX Squire is backing up top, going for the TP out. Does get it. So we're seeing here, like, uh... Another rotation bottom two. They're looking for this tier two again. Able mm -hmm. to pop the Fortify. And again, it's all just about, like, jamming the team. Because the Gyro still can't really do anything to Lifesteal or ever. Sure. His damage is still mostly magical. Oh, and this is and a blink on Smiley, too. I think they're able to find Kawiz unless there's a BKB popped, but he's just going for the TP out. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we didn't need... No, they lose that. MX Squire just gets a solo kill mid. And they're looking for Puck as well. I think they can maybe get this if the rest of the team doesn't show up. They're trying to get a lot of damage out here from the ET. That bonus coming through. MX Squire shackle shots it. And you do lose Ka in the bot lane. But what yeah, just Mondo can't have heroes. those kind of mistakes. Because now the Roshan the is flipping, yeah. And they have a medallion as well on top of this, so this might even be a really quick Roshan. Mm -hmm. They should know that this is happening because they have the ward. Rotation over from Smiley, he's got the blink, he's got two Astrals. Alt up as well, but do they have the timing? They need to know how low this Roche is, and they might not have a great way to get vision on it. Turtle King probably just going to die here, going for the stomp, going to die to the Astral. In comes the snap out. Can they get the Roche in time? MX Wire looking for it. Does get the Aegis. They've lost one on the ET. They've lost two. Gyro going down. Now Fatal is going to take a lot of right clicks. They do get a return kill. Shackle shot to escape there from MX Wire as Lina does drop. Baboon dying, but the fight's still going pretty well for people. Glad you sure you gave up Roche, I, but yeah, they got that last hit as well on, Roche, on Dire. So I, yeah, I it's not a big really deal though. It's on, on Windrunner and not Gyro. Yeah, and Win is really only capable of killing either Lifestealer or, or OD. You can't kill both. And when both of them are together, that makes that really difficult, as they are just going to play S5 now. MX Squire is spotted on the high ground looking for the cookie. He actually has vision on him and instead goes for the shackle. MX Squire is in danger here. Yeah, he might just lose this immediately. He does. Yeah, the root is there. Nice positioning from Puck to lock down MX Squire. You need some kind of save here. Kawhi is just running into the they pit. Need... They do get a nice shackle on the two. Need to get an astral follow up to this. The ult coming out from ET very soon. No, actually still doesn't have it. Trying to get the ult out from Puck. They ult very late from ET. They do get an X onto the ET. So I think they will at least be able to get that kill. Same thing for Baboon as well. Trying to get a return onto Cub, but the rocket there to stun up. And they get two in return for losing MX Squire twice. Or three you know, in return, sorry. If they didn't give their hill up there, 
Radiant is probably taking Rax right now. Dyer got to walk away. You know, like even when pressing oh, BKB. This is dead Turtle King. You just get fall champ. Even with the, uh, you know, when having MKB, it is a Mech Squire, and we all know that Mech Squire is a giant fucking noob, so he's just gonna run away. But like, uh, they gave up the hill, which allowed the Iowa Gyro to run forward, and kind of the good thing about Iowa Gyro is that they do damage while walking, which isn't something like uh, most heroes do, and Winner is the same way, they all can do damage while chasing. Usually you have to like do it in between, you do damage, then you chase, and you chase, and uh, you do damage, then chase. But because they gave up the hill, they were just taking damage and dealing none out. If Underlord would have just planted himself on the, the ledge there, they have the ward like superior vision, and they're probably going to kill every fucking hero that walked up. Because mm -hmm. like we get to see that Wind doesn't have BKB. You know, If you're people glad, you do assume that Wind does. But all Wind can really do there is BKB and run away. Because if he goes to ult anybody, that hero just gets ulted, or gets uh, put under by OD. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like tactical mistakes, and I don't oh, like bashing. Kha is gonna get astral up. Needs to be able to hit something out afterwards, but Baboon is here to follow up with a stun. Io gone, and I think they can't really make a defense now. As Fatalness might just be the next target, able to get yeah, Astral on top of Fatalness, and not a lot of ways for him to escape, especially with the Snap Rallet on top of that. Out comes the Pit as well. Buck doing a nice job locking him down, and that is two heroes immediately gone. Smiley. Really fast paced at the moment. He even picked up Tranquils for that. Yeah, he th I think he got Tranquils even before Nulls. But, uh. Very strange. I, I think they should understand that they're stronger. You know, even with, like, the net worth not being. You know, being equal. They have such a, like, strong hero advantage. Like, their gyro still isn't very useful. Like, their effective net worth is incredibly uh, radiant favored for a really long time. The only time it really swings is when Gyro has Satanic Rapier. Because Lexio is going to have his evasion talent soon. Which is a big deal. Snail guesses. You have Turtle King pushing bottom, but one more tier 2 left for a Mike and the Muppets. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Mondo actually going top now. He's alone there, so they might try and look for a pickoff. But uh, I'm just going to play it slow. A couple of pinks coming out on Smiley, actually, as they had vision on him. But uh, I don't think they can really chase this. They should just kind of wait. Turtle King almost has his Ags. Which, even if it is like a wrong item, you think, it's still important to get items. And... Gyro still needs... You know, another 8,000 gold or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, I think the Ags was a lot better when you got um, the BKB after, I believe it was immediately after you hit the stomp. Um, the BKB applied to you, and now it's like the spirit has to come back to you. Um, which still is pretty good, but it's just... Yeah. It, yeah, it, it's kind of just like, well now, if you want to stomp and then get the spirit back, it just it makes it a little bit awkward. As Astral is They're actually going to be used. Huge danger. MX Squire wants to try and commit for this, gets the Yules on top of himself, blink out from Smiley as well. That's a nice counter initiation from Baboon on the top side. Mondo looking for a target to go on, gets on top of Ka, but doesn't want to commit for it. Mondo's just backing now. Has to go for the armlet toggle on the backside. J Mac is throwing out the ult, but they lose the life stealer. Just get chased out into the sleep and this jackal from MX Squire. Can they bring him down? He does get an Astral. J Mac in the middle of this, trying to bring him down as well. Wiz pops the BKB to continue to stay on top of another shackle shot from MX Squire locking down the OD. How many in a row can this man hit? They're all dying. Even throws the tip out in the middle of this fight. It's still going on. Baboon turning with the Laguna. Not enough to kill off Ka. MX Squire. Oh my god. More like MX God. It's god unbelievable to me that the Underlord didn't ulti in first. Just like they did every single other defense, right? And now they're losing Rax. They have to use the buyback on OD. They don't want to give this one up. Kawiz is still super far on the high ground. He needs to get something out here. He gets the save. Alt use. He's not relocated uh... away. He's still here. Oh, wait, what? Oh, no. He went in the Astral. Oh, my God. He actually just went straight back. Okay. That is my bad. But they do lose Turtle King. Oh, he did like the relocate thing where he just yeah, moves Yeah, I think he just went back slightly instead yeah, of bringing him all the way back. To break the chains. 
Which is good. Oh, fatalness. Bash, bash, bash. bash. Oh. The 19%, 25% was not in his favor. So another big reason, um, you saw for the first time the winner ulti like did damage to Lifestealer. And it's because the Underlord wasn't there with the Atrophy Aura to, you know, basically nullify and make it only MKB procs. Which, and that's, I, I mean, to be fair, still MKB procs are going to do a decent amount. It's just obviously yeah, 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 not but it's much. not it's not going to kill the Lifestealer. Yeah. And then also with him not being in front, the OD had to like triple astral himself. So he just had to like keep waiting time. So he was never able to build up stats or stacks or build up uh, damage on any hero or save his life stealer there. So it's a huge thing. Do you know what I'm telling you? The sleeps, the stomps lead to shackle shots and then it's just, it's a good hero. Yeah. Although, again, I don't really know what the eggs really gives you, but... Oh, they just used two smokes on accident right there. They did smoke underneath the ward, because they're in his obs over here, and I think they will just back up to their own triangle. And this time, they're taking your advice, their escape. They're just going to sit on the high ground, I think. Kawhi's actually just... Yeah, if they protect their the hill, line. they're going to win the fight. But what's probably going to happen is that is going to put heroes on the enemy's high ground, like, past the tower. Sure. But they are going across... They Under should Lord's go the empty rack. Is what happened last fight. So like he, got, he did try to ulti in on a creep, but the creep died. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> toxic to your escape right there. To put it, it nicely. be able to walk away from this. He did have another Astral. I'm a little surprised he didn't use it, but a nice torrent there on the puck. We'll see how they want to initiate this. They're actually going in on this. Puck is right in the middle of the fight. You do immediately lose your Elder Titan. Able to get the alt off. Maybe you can follow it up on the J-Mac. Smiley again trying to build up the stacks. Blinks in. Goes on Ka. Looking for the explode. But Kawhi is able to pop the BKB. Smiley can struggle to find a target to hit right now. Not really doing too much damage on the Gyro. But is pushing them back at the moment. All the way back to the fountain almost is Smiley. So you do not have the boat for a little bit yet. But you do get a nice... X marks the spot. You lost Mondo. I didn't even see Mondo die. Got one runner. Completely away from the rest of the team. He tried to go and kill ET, but they pays the price for it. And damn, a cub makes the exact same TP play. As they might be able to get away, they're looking for Kawhi's. Smiley has a very quick move speed here, but is gonna back off. Rough. Well, we're seeing effectively an absolute gift of a series. They were <laughs> heavily in control, and it's just uh, something that shouldn't go right for them goes wrong from just one player making a mistake. And that's terrible to see. Because you have, you know, Babis and J-Mac and Smiley, uh, you know, playing their hearts out. And you're seeing stuff like Mondo being solo killed. Oh. But the Roche on Yeah, into the Roche. Puck is up for this one. You also get the stun in for Baboon, who is their target, though. Fatalness is standing on a really good positioning for this to keep Smiley out, but they need to cancel that blink, I think. And no, he's not actually able to steal this. Didn't even try, really. And now Kawhi's can just back off if he wants to. He does have the Aegis this time. Looking for the Shackle Shot as MX Wire. You get the pit on top of him. They are going to just play it safe, back off. Yeah, they have to wait for Lifestealer to be alive. Um, it's just hard now. MX Squire can, like, uh, you know, kill Lifestealer. If Lifestealer is in range of Elder Titan with the eggs, he has zero armor, so he's going to get molly whopped. molly -whopped. I like it. It's a very colorful word. But yeah, he didn't go for Abyssal for like the damage block or AC. He kind of has, you know, two parts. The uh, offensive parts of both of them. Very interesting scan there as it spots Turtle King. And only Turtle King was running around in that jungle with an Invis rune. But maybe top lane that can try and take a fight. Smiley's running up here. He's got BKB. He's got a blink. He's got that eggs blinking forward. Being very aggressive right now. 
So get the Astral on top of himself, at least get a charge gone. Maybe they can still take the tier 1 as well as this Catapult wailing into it, but not quite killing it. Might look for the Deny here. And they do not get it. Kawaii's actually gets the last hit, looking for the stomp into the shackle shot. They get it onto Smiley. Do they have the burst? No, they do not. But he's popping the BKB, so he can't save himself. The BKB kills his life, and that's a dieback. He can't come back into this one. Now Mondo trying to focus down MX Squire, but he could just run away. The rest of the team just getting melted. They don't even get the ET ult or the Pitlord ult out. And now into a creep is Mondo, but now he's just trying to escape. He doesn't have magic immunity for a little bit yet. Trying to turn it, but it's not going to happen. BKB OD might just be the biggest trap, I think, because you can't use that Astral on yourself. Well, you know, I forget your name, Killer Karate. <laughs> what the I fuck? I think, I think we're seeing. What the fuck? Dude, I, I have oh my real God. low brain cells right now, if you haven't been able to tell. I think we're seeing the team that was the most successful in the legal ad speed run. We're seeing the first eliminated team. Congrats to people glad on their speedrun of League of Lads season oh five. Oh my god. <laughs> but I think we're seeing the throne fall here. Bad this is holding on. Yeah. Oh god. Three seconds until the life stealers back up. Someone buy back from the GG is called! People yeah, glad it. competes this completes the speedrun. <laughs> uh, unfortunate for the gladders. They had a couple of good series that I've casted myself throughout, but yeah, I, I think like you said, some of what comes into it is when you're not playing with a consistent lineup throughout the season, it's probably not as big of a deal as in like Pro Dota, but even in a league like this, it can still do something for you. You see the yeah. lineups that stay consistent are the ones that, you know, tend to find the most success, but... Yeah, do the most damage. Yeah. That sucks. Congrats on people, Glad. Really good speed run, super fast. Oh my god. <laughs> it ain't out in no time at all. Caster. He is just flaming <laughs> anybody. In absolutely no time. Anyway, congrats to Mike and the Muppets. I, I still think a well played series from then, um, despite a lot of. I, decent amount of mistakes on both ends, I think. The drafts just never really felt like. Yeah. Great. They're kind of awkward yeah. a little bit, but... It is what it is. So we see... <laughs> we can finally look at brackets. Oh my god. Hold on, I'll find it. I'll find it. Give me a second. Oh no, second, por favor. So we will see... We're groupy. We will see now... Ka... And Ko... Play against... Former... Co and co co part in the USS Guamsters. We'll see pretenders versus the Muppets. Pog champ. Pog champ. Nice. Wait, is that it? I guess the rest of the series were kind of like made up. Um... What's up? So yeah, so now we're just waiting on. We have Wednesday. Wednesday, oh, wait, 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 I thought the first round of the playoffs was Wednesday, or is that another plane? This What's was that? this was the first round of the playoffs. Okay. What so the we play see, match, technically, yeah, on there? Wednesday, Nebula and Free Logical play, for which is the last regular season game. And then you also have Gorilla's Banana Hammock, which is another uh, playoff game. Like, this is the same thing, both lower bracket teams. And then we have our first... I guess bracket game with us playing Toilet Bell. Yes. Dude, this is the third time me and Toilet Bell play for elimination in three Zeriscape seasons. Just go to the upper bracket, dude. It's just getting good. Dude, we did. The first season there was it was just single OLM. And so we played them like second. Then we played them in grand finals. And then last season they didn't play. But then they come back and Oh the yeah, last season they didn't play. So four out of my three times or my three things, I've had to play against Toilet Bell to either eliminate them or be eliminated. That's Pog Champ. Well, no, wait, is that series scheduled yet? Yeah, Wednesday. Oh my god, everybody plays on Wednesday. 
Yeah, it's, it's a standard League of Lads day, brother. No, it's not. There's never been a standard day. Oh, dude, every game in this league is always on Wednesday. There's usually a game on Wednesday every single week. Dude, we yeah, average like nine games on Wednesday. Okay, it happened once when there was nine <laughs> games on Wednesday. You but. just look around like, who's playing? Who's the boys? But yeah, GG's. Yeah, thanks for joining me, Zerascape. It has been an excellent series to cast a 2-0 for Mike and the Muppets. Congrats to them. Good luck further. It's been awesome to cast. Any other thoughts, Zerascape? Or Heck can you just yeah. kind of blame people? Congrats to people glad for the speed run of League of Legends. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's good, you're, you're it's done. good to see you're our, done. our win of the speed this run. Is a, this is a positive cast. It is positive. I'm congratulating them. That's not... Look, at you, the, the look man, that's sometimes insane. people play Super Mario Brothers for, like, completions, right? No, I know what a speed run is. And other speed. people play Super Mario Brothers to, you know, get done with it the fastest. I know what a speed run is, Zero Escape. And they were speed running. All right, we're done. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>